everybody. Welcome back to Tech and Beer. This is episode number 11. And uh, we're live again today from our favorite hangout, the Celtic Corner here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And today we're going to be talking about our community and our local economy and how the technology uh, industry is really taking advantage of Halifax and making Halifax more and more of a hub. And our guest today is uh, Mayor of Halifax, uh, Mike Savage. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Awesome to be here in beautiful Celtic Corner in downtown Dartmouth. No better place. Absolutely. It's a, a landmark. If anyone hasn't come here yet, make sure you make it down here. So Do that for sure. What are we drinking today? I am told that that is a good robot Radler, yeah. right? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah, cheers. Cheers to you, sir. Mm. Mm. Interesting, yeah, nice. Yeah, citrusy, light, refreshing. Yeah. Rattlers yeah, of good. the rage, I guess, in the summer They're now. They're all over, right? Yeah. There's a ton of Rattlers, man. I'll tell you, it's a, it's a, it, when I was a, uh, a kid and my father was drinking beer and he didn't want something heavy, he'd have a shandy. So it's kind of like a shandy, right? right? So. Yeah, you don't see, the sh- same in England, you get a lot of shandies, yeah. but you don't see them That's here very often. No, you don't. No. Nope. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so thanks for coming on the show. And um, you know, I'm a come from away from England originally, as I mentioned. And one of the things that I've seen in, in Halifax, in Nova Scotia, in the ten years that I've been here, is a real growth in the technology sector. And how, how does that look from your perspective? Because from my perspective, yeah. it might be one thing, but how, how do you see it from your position? Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely integral to the growth of the city. Um, you know, Halifax is a city with a traditionally pretty diversified economy. Yeah, with a hub of of government, uh, and we have the uh, oceans and and uh, finance and all that sort of stuff. But pretty diversified economy. So when we have something like the opportunity to to have tech here, which every city in the world wants, right? And I remember a number of people, certainly Dr. Florizone at Dalhousie, saying when he first came here that if you went back 20 or 30 years and looked at Kitchener, Waterloo, and Halifax, and said which one had the ingredients to be a technology hub, a magnet for kids, and all that. You would have chosen Halifax, but we didn't do it really? then, and they did. Right. So now we're now we are doing it, and we have uh, you know Volta doing tremendous uh, stuff, and their grand opening is tomorrow night. Uh, but just a lot of really cool stuff happening on the tech front, and it brings the kind of people here that we want to have. Right, and with the with the the depth in universities and students and talent that's coming out of those, it's it's if you're an organization looking for a place to draw on that kind of talent pool, uh, you probably couldn't get a better a better city for that. I think that's right. You know, for a long time, we always had kids come here to go to school. Yeah. They weren't staying, and that was a real problem. Right. And so we've been really focused on trying to get young people to stay once they uh, graduate. That's a big deal. So it happens in technology in a number of ways, right? So IBM and RBC are mm-hmm. hiring young people in big numbers. But then you've got the, the Voltas and the companies like the Dash Hudsons, the Athletogens, mm-hmm. the Proposifies, the, the companies that have kind of just almost organically grown verb interactive right. and all of a sudden they're hiring a lot of people and uh, almost can't keep up with the uh, demand for work so uh, it, there's a lot going on and Halifax does f- you know we do feed out a lot of kids who are bright and they want to yeah. work yeah exactly. so let's let's you mentioned some uh, big companies there let's talk about some of the uh, the bigger organizations that have been here because there's been some some of the top organizations in the world from a tech perspective really with you mentioned IBM RBC, yeah. NTT data. Yeah. Um, what, what does Halifax do to be attractive for those kind of companies? Are there any specific things that, that as a government or a, a region that Halifax does that? Well, we've always had the ingredients. You know, when you think about <clears throat> what a city needs to be successful, young people, a nice location, we've always been, I think, the kind of place that people wanted to live. Right. You know, where you could be downtown and you could be on a beach in 15 minutes, you could be in a pristine yeah. wilderness in an hour. and that kind of quality of life is important, but we, were, in my view at least, we weren't selling it. So right. a few years ago, we put together this package that we call Halifax TLC, Talent, Location, Cost. Right. And we did take it on the road to companies and spoke. I've spoken at the Economic Club in Toronto on a couple of occasions. We've taken the message to Boston, to Houston, to China, and to Europe. Mm. And uh, we're finding a receptive audience. And it's the businesses here that seem to recognize that there is an opportunity. I mean, if you're a young person coming out and you want to work, Toronto, Vancouver, pretty exciting places to live, yeah. they're not really affordable, mm-hmm. right? And so let's take what we have, which is a lot of young talent, and uh, add that to what I think is our value proposition, which is lots of talent, uh, a nice place to live, a lot cheaper than Toronto and yeah. Vancouver. Put those all together, and companies mm-hmm. like RBC have been awesome 
uh, IBM, uh, NTT Data, these companies have been great citizens, not only hiring our kids, but giving them a chance to grow in their careers and also giving back to the community. They all give back in some way to the community. Yeah, that's great. And I think, I think you're right, that work-life balancing is, um, is very attractive. You know, where I came from, everybody grows up, goes to work in London for a number of years, uh, part of the rat race, that's where the money is, where the big financial institutions are. Then you get to like 45, 55, and everyone wants to kind of slow down, semi-retire, and kind of try to get into the countryside, yeah. get that kind of slower pace of life. But the consequence of that is, doing it that way around, the nice places in the country are very expensive in the yeah. UK. But here, we've got all this beautiful countryside, these just, you know, you can be half an hour outside of the city and feel like you're, you know, in a different, in a different world, right? So. I that's that's absolutely right. And I, I remember meeting uh, a guy from London at one of the mid-sized tech companies uh, here in Halifax, an awesome company, and uh, in a company that was almost like the United Nations, of, where you know, people were from all over the world. And I asked this guy from London, how did you end up here? And he said, look, I didn't have any great attachment that kept me in England. Yeah. I was looking for a kind of a cool city. I went online. I kind of liked Halifax. I was looking for a cool company. Right. I liked this company. It was Elixir, I think. Okay. And you put the two together. And so if you can... You know, we, we have always had the, the fiddles and the bagpipes mm. and the ocean. That's really great. People love that, but it's not a value proposition. Right. But you know, when you put a monet, when you monetize it and say, this is a cool place to live, you can afford to live here, and you can have these other benefits. And by the way, you know, we've got this beautiful new convention center, library, discovery yeah. center, lots of bars and pubs like Celtic Corner. Argyle Street looks awesome these yes. days. It's an inviting place for people to come. And people, uh, you know, when kids come out of school, it's not like I you came out of school and you went to work, you thought you'd be there 40 years and get a watch. Kids want to do interesting work yeah. in interesting companies. They want to have opportunity to give back to the community and they want to have places to go with that are fun and vibrant. And I think Halifax has those things. Absolutely, nail on the head. So you touched there as well on some of the, the startup community, you mentioned some of those, those companies and that's uh, like Volta's doing a great job. You've got the Cove, um, there's, there's this whole kind of uh, movement now with startups. It used to be really hard to start a company up or to be become an entrepreneur, but now it's uh, it's getting easier and easier. Um, like, how do you see that that piece having an impact? How do you see those companies yeah. uh, develop it? Well, I think it's really um, it's 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 uh, it's hard to figure the cause from the effect sometimes. Mm. So one of the things we do have here is um, we were yearning to be that kind of a, uh, a community, and we really didn't quite have it. You know, Volta and Jesse and the gang and the, guy, the work that they've done have come down and made us to some extent see what's possible. So we have the schools that are now kicking out talent and giving them an opportunity. We also have a pretty engaged um, group of senior business leaders who were looking to invest through things like the Creative Destruction Labs. Right. You know, the, the guys who've done really well, they want to invest in these companies and they're giving very frank feedback to them yeah. and they want to get uh, uh, and be involved and they're also supporting things you know, the Risley, Clearwater, mm. uh, Amera are supporting things like the Ocean Frontier Institute, the Idea Hub, um, Cove, and of course the super cluster on oceans, which right. is bringing a ton of opportunity to this city, which we should be very thankful for. Yeah, the super clusters are super exciting, uh, yeah. <laughs> no pun intended, but yeah, it's nope. very exciting. Um, and it's gonna, a great strategy there from, from the federal government coming down. Yeah, it is, you know, and it's, yeah. for us it's perfect, and we're, it's a sign of the times, too. One of the things I think that governments have to realize is that when you look at the tech economy, you look at the emerging innovation um, culture, it's a very sharing culture. Yeah. You know, it, and so the, the, some of the companies that are already here, they want other companies to do well. Right. They're recognizing that we kind of do better when we help each other yeah. out. Governments have to realize that, too. We hoard information like it's the most important thing since Nefertiti's tomb, right? So we have to open our information, we have to be prepared to share in that economy, yeah. we have to be prepared to pitch in where we can uh, and work with uh, the folks who are innovating. Yeah, no, that makes sense, absolutely. And Atlantic Canada, you, again, you mentioned, touched there on some of the, the existing business leaders we've got. It, it impressed me straight away, the big family-owned entrepreneurs that we've got in this region yeah. that have built, you know, some of them from small, humble beginnings have built global empires right here in Atlantic Canada. So that entrepreneurial spirit and that drive in the business sense is, is right here. So it's great that it's uh, being yeah. funneled back into the tech space. That's awesome. That's absolutely right. And, and they, you know, a lot of them have you know, started, uh, Clearwater started with a couple of guys selling lobsters, right? Uh, right? 
and other companies started very small. And so two things, one is it's an example yeah. that you can do it from here, but the other is that they are actu actually you know, investing in these companies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the Rob Steele's, the George Armoyans, the Jim Spatz's, the, all these guys, Wade Daw, they're all looking to, they want to make money. You know, cool. this is not a, you know, we're not in this for nothing. No. But if we can make it off a local idea, yeah. uh, then they're going to do that. I think that's really uh, important. Absolutely. So we touched on the, the, the super cluster there and Cove a little bit. Um, I want to talk about the, the kind of the ocean side of things of the economy here. Obviously, yep. lobster and fishing and, and that piece has, has always been very and still is very important to the economy yep. here. How is that uh, uh, coming together, like merging with the tech community? Mm. How, how are we kind of um, leveraging that experience to yep. build the tech stuff? This morning I met uh, and last night with a group from San Diego who are very involved in the um, blue tech, so the ocean side of things, okay. and there's a, a real recognition that a lot of the success of the world in the years to come is going to come from the ocean, whether it's Absolutely. in the terms of uh, uh, you know, nutrition, of energy, and all these different things. And a lot of the stuff that we do in Halifax on the oceans is what we did 100 and 150 years ago, but we do it in a modern way. Like right. we have shipbuilding is a huge employer in Halifax. Uh, mm. But the technology that's employed in shipbuilding at the Irving Yard is, is world class. You know, we used to go and catch the fish and we'd send them overseas. We're now catching sea feed, sea, seaweed and right. sea plants. And we're, you know, we're doing some of the secondary processing here and then we're sending it, it, it over. So a lot of the stuff that we're doing, we've done for years, but we're doing it in new ways, combining the technology mm. with the traditional industries and finding a way to, to have uh, value added right here before we send that mm. stuff off. So I think the history of that ties very well into where we are now and gives us a bit of a guidepost for the future. Yeah. And the, the old economy is um, yeah, still going to be there, it's still going to be, and it's going to benefit from the, some of the new technologies being developed here, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, so it's, that seems to me like, again, like a, a nice value proposition, having the, the old world experience and the, and the, the new kind of tech. Uh, innovation. Yeah, and I, I think it even helps a little bit when you brand it, you know, having that sort of, that old world sort of um, uh, imprint on things, mm -hmm. even when you do things in a new way, there's the, the brand that comes from a place like Nova Scotia, the traditions, mm -hmm. but, you know, nobody owes us anything. Nobody right. owes us a living. We're not going to be a tech hub unless we produce real talent right. and innovate and find a way to create value. That's what these folks are doing, and, and the tech is so important here in Halifax as it is anywhere because a lot of it hires young talent, and I, uh, no offense to people my age, older, <laughs> we need guys like us, but we want the young, you know, the young uh, talent. And the other part of it is that it's, just, it's all export driven, so right. it's all creating value here from money from somewhere else, yeah. and whether it's in you know, animation or whether it's in, you know, uh, healthcare, whatever it is, yeah. whether it's just straight tech, uh, you know, we're, we're exporting that and making real money. That's new money yeah. being generated into this economy. Exactly. Yeah. And that's always the, yeah, the, the best way to do it because it's, uh, it's building up what we've got. Yeah. Here. Especially when you're hiring, keeping kids here, yeah. hiring them, bringing them here. Right. So and I don't hear, you know, I mean, I know like, I, every mayor in the world is, is, is half full of crap, okay, about their city. She or he, they all think the same thing. So I recognize that we tend to sell our strengths and ignore our weaknesses. Of we course. have challenges. Uh, and I don't want to overstate Halifax, uh, but I think all the other mayors in the world have cities that are tied for second best. Right. And we're number one. There you go. <laughs> Not to be uh, boastful. Awesome. So you mentioned there the students and that. Is it also having an impact on, on immigration into the city? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it absolutely is. You know, we, 90% of the growth of Halifax now is from immigration. 90%? From a city that wow. for years was the center of immigration coming into Canada through right. Pier 21. Yeah. But they didn't stay, they went somewhere else. And, uh, you know, we, you know, I remember somebody called me up when I was proposing that uh, permanent residents should be able to vote in the municipal elections. Okay. And they were very upset, and I understand it. And they said, look, our son can't get work why are you bringing more people in? And I said, because the people who come in are more likely to hire your son than somebody who's born here. Like the, we are bringing people in who are adding to this economy. Right. Uh, whether they come with money, whether they come with an education, or whether yeah. they just come with a, 
a willingness to work hard and have a better life. Like, immigration is really what's fueling the growth of Halifax, and I think it's a very positive thing. Yeah. I had no idea it was 90%. And that's that's 90% of the number. growth. We wow. just heard that this morning at the Halifax Partnership meeting wow. of last year's growth. And of course, the beauty of it in the last few years, we always had growth in the 55 plus category age group. Okay. Uh, in the last few years, uh, half of that growth has been 25 to 39 year olds. So that's awesome. it's people who come from other parts of the world to go to school and stay, or people who get educated somewhere else and find an opportunity here. Right. Yeah. And with the and you and I are both immigrants. Absolutely, there you go. And with the population challenge, or the the age of the population here, the challenge is real. That that we need more people. I mean, there's uh, yeah. and it's not just here. It's really a. I was reading some stats that it's kind of a Western world problem that even since the crash in 2008, we're having less babies. So, how many have you got? Just a one. Yeah, I got two. So we're not doing very well. No, well, there you go. <laughs> but you're young. You could have another 10. But you know what? There's, there's a lot of th immigration is a funny thing. For a long time, we sort of looked at it here as, well, you know, okay, I'm not sure, but maybe they can come in. Now we're realizing that we have to compete for immigrants. Right. And they can go anywhere in the world. It's just mm -hmm. like that gentleman in, in London that I met. You know, there's a lot of opportunity. So that's why, it's, you know, you've got these cool companies, big companies, mid-sized companies, small companies that are out there recruiting for talent yeah. and also employing the... the uh, the ones who are graduating from school here, it's, it's, it's important. And a lot, of, a lot of countries are having trouble. Yeah. I met this morning with, um, we have a sister city, Halifax does, in Japan, Hakodate, Japan. Yeah. They've got a huge demographic uh, problem, and they know it, but the country has not traditionally embraced immigration. Okay. And they're starting to realize, I think, that this is one way to deal with your uh, labor issues, and the fact that you've got more people uh, paying uh, needing services and less people in the active workforce to to pay for them so bring people in young hope they stay here mm -hmm. but even if they don't right so i always tell people i want kids to stay here but if young people go somewhere else to make a living they keep a fond uh, place in their heart for halifax yeah that's a great thing because the world's too small to have enemies absolutely yeah it's uh, and the story spreads word of mouth is is the best way to to grow anything right? totally so, yeah yeah interesting you mentioned the sister city uh Thing there because I've, I've always read that different places have sister cities. How does that work? Like how much of an integration and, and converse, conversation back and forth is there between different sister cities? That depends on the relationship you want to have. In Halifax we kind of have two. We have economic sister cities okay. and we have friendship cities. So we signed a, a relationship with a city in China in June in Zhuhai where okay. uh, St. Mary's University and the port already have a relationship. Um, we have three official sister cities in Japan in Norfolk, Virginia, which is uh, makes sense. It's the East Coast American hub of the Navy port and all that stuff. And uh, our third one is in Mexico, in Campeche. And we haven't wow. really worked that one as much as we should. We belong to an organization called the World Energy Cities Partnership, which includes big cities like Houston and, and Rio and Cape Town, smaller cities like Stavanger in Norway and Aberdeen in Scotland. Okay. And we have a really good close relationship with those uh, cities. But I think that if you're going to have a relationship with a city, if you're going to formalize it, yeah. then it has to be based on some kind of commonality and some kind mm. of strategy. There are some cities that have tons of sister cities but really don't work it. Right. So we like to have some kind of economic similarity. In the case of Hakodate, frankly, it's the fact that we both have, have uh, walled uh, fortresses in our city. Wow. In the case <laughs> of uh, Norfolk, it's the military connection. Yeah. And uh, so we're exploring right now sister cities in uh, Poland, uh, in Germany. Okay. Um, uh, we've looked at possibly uh, early, early stages, a city like uh, Israel, like uh, Haifa, okay. which is a tech city. Um, yeah. in, uh, and that's the kind of relationship we'd like to build. In Halifax, of course, we have a huge and really important Lebanese community. Right. So I'd like to see us see if we can find something in, uh, in Lebanon as yeah. well, that based on the fact that uh, immigrants and largely Lebanese, uh, but others as well, have built this city. They, yeah, they own a lot of great businesses and oh, organizations around town. Yeah. Including our convention center. Right. Uh, and a ton of other things. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Interesting. So, what, what would you say uh, from an advice perspective to, to somebody coming here, looking to get into the community, uh, trying to establish themselves? Uh, any, any kind of tips for, for those people? Who are coming Not, here? Com yeah, because so obviously yeah. there's a lot of people coming and, and uh, yeah. so... so those might be some of the people that would watch this episode, maybe. Well, first of all, you know, we travel the world, uh, as does the province. And I must say that here in Nova Scotia, we have a really 
good alignment between provincial and uh, city efforts. We recognize that we have to work together. Um, and I don't really offer advice to people. Uh, I just tell them to come and visit Halifax. Right. And, and whether you come here to uh, work, to live, to visit, you know, to study, to invest, to have yeah. a meal, to see a show, to uh, just come and, and, and check us out. And I would say to anybody who has come here, you know, to get involved. Yeah. And uh, I think I haven't heard very many people, if anybody ever tell me that we're not a friendly city. Yeah. Um, but we have to up our game from being friendly to actually being welcoming and make sure that right. newcomers realize how much value we place on them being here because, you know, we are not, by and large, um, you know, we're, we're the sellers, mm -hmm. right? We're trying to sell our city and they're the customer and we need to treat them right. as customers. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed in the past that it's been, sometimes it can be challenging, uh, We've got all these great things happening, but we don't always work together to tell the story. Sometimes this group's working over here and this group's working over there, um, but the story's not being told in a unified way. Um, yeah. But it sounds like some of that's changing. Yeah, I think so. I, I remember years ago, I was a member of parliament. I went to India and I met with the Ministry of Education and they told me an interesting story. At one point in time, as many Indian students went to Canada as Australia to study. Wow. But by this point, this was 2010, it was 10 or 20 times more likely to go to Australia. And the reason was that Australia would come not just selling Australian education, right. but with the Department of Immigration saying, this is the complete package. You want to come to right. Australia? We can do all this now. Mm. And at that time, we were based, usually selling. You know, McGill would go, U of T would go, UBC, Dow would go. And we didn't brand it as Canadian education, and we didn't have that immigration tie-in as well. Mm. So I think the idea of putting everything together putting together your value proposition and uh, selling it as a package is uh, is really important. So when we go, for example, to Toronto, when I go to speak at the Economic Club, Nova Scotia Business Inc. is with us. There's mm -hmm. a wonderful guy there named Mike uh, uh, Branchflower who traveled with us uh, this year. Uh, we work with Laurel Broughton. We work with our economic development agency, the Halifax Partnership, who I travel with quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a simple philosophy, which is it doesn't matter you will, you will accomplish great things if you don't care who gets the credit. Right. And so if we can worry less about jurisdiction and, and you know, who gets to stick their hand up and say, I bought this person here, but really look at this from a holistic point of view, because I don't want Halifax to do well if Nova Scotia doesn't. I don't really want Halifax to do well if Maritime Canada doesn't do well. We're right. too small to be uh, yeah. sort of uh, pissing in each other's cornflakes, so to speak. Right? Yeah. So uh, let's work together. Yeah, and that's, and that's true. I mean, it's uh, anywhere in Atlantic Canada, uh, you know, you're one connection away from knowing somebody that knows somebody, so. And that's right, and if you look at outside of Halifax, you know, areas that are doing well, there's some really cool areas, the Wolfville, yeah. the South Shore, and some really cool entrepreneurs making this stuff, right. you know, making making wine and beer and yeah. and, and uh, distilled products and, and ciders. There's a lot of really cool, smart people, and mm. there's enough room for us all to do well. No, absolutely, absolutely. So is, is there anything that, that we need from a, when, when you start to spread out like that, that you need from a kind of infrastructure perspective to help help people a little more. Um, I know that's a big question because there's a lot there's a lot of distance and a lot of different topics in, inside that. But well, I think a, a lot of the infrastructure pieces are being put together. This whole idea of putting together an innovation district, I think, is important. Right. So it's it's fine to have it sort of virtually or notionally in your head. But I think as we add things like the Idea Hub and the Ocean Frontier Institute with stuff that exists, like our new central library, which is awesome, mm. the Nova Scotia Community College, clearly Cove, so you jump across the harbor over to this side and look at that, and then tie it into the universities and, and what they're doing. Um, and there's some really interesting things that are, I think are gonna happen uh, in, in the city. Uh, I think that infrastructure is important. I think we have some of the infrastructure that, like, I think some of the infrastructure was given to us by the creator, you know, right. clean water, lakes, and a nice ocean, and beaches, and green spaces, um, and we've added some nice pieces to it, like the yeah. convention center, and the discovery center, and some really good developments. We have a very strong and very uh, creative and progressive uh, development community here in the city, mm -hmm. uh, just driving by the new Doyle block across from the library in Halifax the other yeah. day that Danny Shedra's group, Westwood did. Wide sidewalks, places to sit, comfortable, where people can grab a coffee and walk outside. Mm -hmm. uh, we're becoming a much more progressive urban place. All of that built 
environment and infrastructure helps us to become the kind of city where people want to come. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah. But, uh, well, thank you very much for coming and uh, for chatting with us today. It was, it was great. It's, uh, it's an exciting time, I think, to be in Halifax and uh, looking forward to see, see us as, as we continue to grow. Well, I love having uh, folks come over to Dartmouth uh, here. Anywhere in this municipality, there's a lot of options. So cheers. Uh, yeah, cheers. Good to you and to the happy to be on the podcast. And Thank I wish you. you continued success. Absolutely. Thanks. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, check us out on techandbeer.ca, on Facebook Live and uh, YouTube. And yeah, look forward to seeing you again next time. Cheers.